father-in-law uh, after his whole family passed away. Uh, he's, when he uh, married my mother-in-law, he still built a house on the same lot where his family died, behind Vito Cruz. And uh, recently, we cleaned up his house and we saw all those bottles. Because I, then I asked one of my father-in-law's brothers, and he said that my father-in-law used to, he was in the perfume business and he used to mix perfumes. But my father-in-law, um, Okay, he ran the first United building. Uh, he, uh, no, he, he first uh, ran the Berg's department store, which is this one. Oh, uh, it, it was in the ground floor. Kung saan yung hub ngayon, tsaka yung East West Bank, that whole place was the Berg's department store. So during that time, it was uh, para Rustans no araw. The uh, 50s, 60s, yeah, he bought the business in 1951 from Ernest Berg. Uh, but he came here as a very poor boy, as a 13-year-old boy. Uh, his father had a sari-sari store. Pinapunta siya dito para ng, uh, to help him in the sari-sari store business. Okay. And later the father thought, if he stayed with me working in the sari-sari store, hindi siya ever yayaman. So his father uh, introduced him to some richer Chinese and told them na, told him na, oh, pa, pa, tulungan mo yung anak ko. Then, when my, then my father-in-law went on to work for many other people, but really, because you know, he came from very poor, a very industrious Shatanaga, so many people were impressed with him. And then, so he started to accumulate some wealth, and then later his father, when, he, when my father was around 20 years old, told him, oh, bumalik ka na sa China para mag-anak. And uh, mag-asawa at mag-anak. Then later he said, no, no, ayoko, yung babalik ako dyan. Then, Asawa, makakaanak, and I spend all my money, babalik na naman dito, trabaho na naman, like our OFWs. So he told his father, ikaw na lang bumalik sa China at magkaanak ka, ako magsistay dito. But I think when he was 25, he also got married. He married this lady, her name is Li Shokke. And this was him. Uh, in his younger years. Uh, and then with, with, so he was very prosperous by that time. He had nine children. Okay. So, parang yung buhay niya. And then in 1936, he also, uh, because nag take over na ang communism sa China, he also uh, got back his father, and at that time his uh, stepmother, and five of his siblings, and brought them here to the Philippines. Okay. However, you know, World War II happened, yes, and they, the Japanese came, went to their house, which is behind the two and um, that time, my fa they, they took my father-in-law's brother, his name is Sihuasan, on January 23, 1945. So the relatives, and they never saw him again. So the relatives said, if you stay here in this house, they will take you and your son, this two. Kasi matangkad na yung son niya. He was 13 or 14 years old at that time. So he and his son fled to San Juan. That was where his mother, uh, mother-in-law lived. San Juan. And, yeah, in San Juan. But unfortunately, when he returned, he saw that the Japanese had killed all his children and his first wife. So, parang down and down siya. It was the, ano, he became later a Methodist. It was the Methodist church who church. helped him a lot to, ano, to parang weather all that uh, hardship. And then in, as you know, the Chinese custom, when your wife dies, you, they, they always usually like you to marry the younger sister. But that time, his first wife, Li Xiong Ken, uh, started to complain to, to, to Syrian Tenga, inaalaga mo, dami-dami yung ano, kapatid, pati na yung tatay mo, nanay mo, uh, tapos tayo, marami din tayong mga anak. Uh, sabi niya, how can, you, how can you keep supporting so many people? So my father-in-law said, I don't want to marry my wife's younger sister. I want to marry someone who will, um, who will not complain about my taking care of my family and who knows my family. He married his bookkeeper, bookkeeper. who is Emerisha Antonio Sayaco, who is my mother-in-law. Bookkeeper niya sa, he had also uh, become an owner of the Cosmos Bazaar. Cosmos Bazaar distributes final pens in the Philippines. So with Emerishana, he had four children, Clarita, Gloria, Roberto Cesar, and I'm here. This is me. Lorraine. But at that time, Joe, I married into the family in 1978. When I married into the family, 
I start, I saw this picture of his desk. It says to me, my dearest daddy, with much love, Evelyn. And I said, Papa, who is this lady? Uh, who is this lady na may picture sa mesa mo? And he told me, uh, siguro anak ng mga managers ko. At that time kasi, he, okay, anyway. So he got, so he said, then when we closed Birds in 1982, by that time he had bought this building. He bought this building in 1979. So he said, uh, ano, uh, that picture followed him also. So I said, Papa, sino itong babae? Ay, hindi ko sabi ko sa iyo. Ano yung anak ng manager ko? When we closed that office, moved to a bigger office, I asked him again. He was really upset na na masyado na ako maraming question. But I told my husband, siguro anak niya sa labas. Bakit? To my dear daddy. Para pong artista. Pero mga mestiza, <laughs> di ba? And my father was very Chinese looking. But then later on, when uh, we started to investigate the history of Berg's department store, we found out, somebody told Robert, oh, why not my husband, why don't you Google about what, what was with Berg's department store? Mm -hmm. That's when we found out, well, my, we knew my father you know, bought the business from a certain Ernest Berg, a German. <laughs> and we found out, he had a daughter, there's a daughter who wrote a book about the war, her name was Evelyn. When I saw it, I said, Nako, parang that's a, that's, nakalimutan ko na yung picture, pero it was still there. Sabi ko, Nako, I think that's the name on the picture. So I ran to the picture and I saw, it says Evelyn. Okay. And this is her book, Evelyn Berg, MP. Mm -hmm. right and then uh, that night, I, we saw a synopsis of the book and then that night I wrote to her and I said, I don't know if you are the one, but if your father's Ernest Berg, I think my father you know, bought the business from your dad. All of that is uh, you're documented here. Mm -hmm. And then she, I couldn't sleep that night. The next day, she, I woke up, opened my emails, and she said, my mind is blown away. Yes, I am ever. What uh, year Let's see, this is 2011, so we probably saw her 2012. 2012. And when I saw her, she brought this picture. So wow. this is the, ano, <laughs> and uh, we, my, my, my family lives in Los Angeles, so we, I still see her, and this is her now. She, she is yeah. around 80, ngayon she's around 80, 1931 she, mm -hmm. so, so she's 88 na. San po siya sa US? Uh, Los Angeles. Los Angeles. Ganda po pala na story na. Ah, oh, <laughs> Ganda oh, po. Oh, oh. <laughs> and this is, uh, but you know that the architect of this, ano ba ang background mo ninyo? Ano, blogger po ba? Ah, blogger, okay. Uh, the, ano is, uh, the architect of this building is Andres Luna de San Pedro. Opa. I don't know if you know him. He is the son of Juan Luna, Juan the Luna. national Artist. artist who painted the Spoliario. Opa. Yeah, but you know what happened to their family? Yes. Uh, Andres Luna killed his wife, who is his mother and uh, mother-in-law. And, uh, but he was a very good architect. In fact, he's also the one who designed the Regina building. Ang katabi po. This one. So kami, ito, ito yun. Yan po, Regina. And he also invested a lot and built, and built the Crystal Arcade, where PNB used to be. Ngayon, sinunod na ni Eram, di ba? Yan ang ano po. Sa tingin ko, sinunod ni Eram yun. So he built this crystal arcade, but during the war, medyo bago pa yun, it got bombed. And lahat ng investment nila, lahat ng dyan. I recently found out, he is also related to Vicente Madrigal, who also owns a building here, the Madrigal building. Yung sa, yung sa tabi ng Ulo restaurant. And in fact, the, the bank of the Madrigals lent him money. So magpinsan sila. You can see the ano, their, their, their ano, relationship there. Uh, pinakuntang siya ng pera and hindi na siya makabayan. So, that medyo nagkaroon sila ng konting away. And because of also that loss, when uh, Andres Mendes and Pedro passed away, he passed away. He was a poor man. In fact, they said that his, the ashes of one Luna were under his bed because he didn't even have the money to bury his father. Okay. So these are, well, this chronicles the history of the life of Mr. Cillian Teng. He landed in Manila in 1918 and then collaborated with friends and started Cosmos Bazaar. He, he did a lot of business with the Pelliasers, the Mestizo. Wow. He married Lee Shok Keng. This is the, the, the son at an older age uh, he, who survived the war. Pero, you know, the war affected him a lot. 
uh, and Michelle. Uh, he was separated from his Chinese wife. He later married an English woman, and uh, and he only died last year. Oh, last year. Mr. Sidney, in 1994, he was already almost 90 years old. He had uh, aneurysm. Aneurysm. He still survived it, yeah. And he used to always tell us, "Okay, I'm gonna celebrate my birthday, ko ah, because you know, akala na just patay na ako. Pero pag na may malaking birthday, mapapansin niya sino ba nag birthday jan? E baka baka sabi niya, "Buhay pa pala ito." True enough, when he turned Chinese age na 100, we had a big party for him. He died that year. Oh, one hundred years old. So you can see these are his employees. Mo mo kang mestiza. This was our rapper of Berg. We met one of the accountants of Ernest Berg, the son. We met him in, in LA and he, he, he found his things of his father. His name is Mr. Castle, I think. And he, he gave this to us. It's a ano, 1946. Yes, in Berg's. But his father had this newspaper. And this is the refrigerator used to burn that time of uh, Berg's apartment store. You can see the freezer is very small. Oh. Know, my mother-in-law, Emericiana, is very nice. She, yung mga sales ladies pag dumating, Mrs. C, pwede ko namin ilagay yung mga pinamili namin sa kiyapo dito. So, look, look, ang namin na sa sales ladies. Baba na magkakasin dyan sa the freezer. Pero she let them put their stuff inside. Okay pa po ba yan? Yeah, it's it No, I kept it. We have an attic. I kept it, and when we decided to do the museum, okay. pinababa ko, pinaliting ko lang. Okay. But you know, <laughs> pag may affair kami, pinag eh, you know, we turn on the kuryente and put soft things inside. Galing po no, na ingatan ko siya. Ano? Uh -oh. Siya po yan. Yeah, it is older age. She's, she's, she's Filipina. No? My mother is Filipina. Mm -hmm. She's wife. So this is us with my brother-in-law. His English wife, it's my sister Carrie at all. This is me mm -hmm. and my husband. And our, these are our children. Some articles have been written about him. Uh, I wrote a, I, I, I admire my father so much. I recited a eulogy upon his death. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, when my, my, my son has a little, this son of mine, uh, he had a little ailment because he's a pa Family, uh, we have. I have a brother who's short. My brother is only like four eight. My son, my two sons are like that. They're both short. So parang na ano sa kanya. So he did not do very well in school. So my father-in-law during my son's retreat wrote a very touching letter to him. This is during the funeral of Mr. C. And my husband's eulogy to his dad. So these are all ano, uh, equipment we use at Berg's. Uh, yung bandwi clock, check rifle, <laughs> adding machine, <laughs> telephones. Wala yun eh, mga gamit nila noon. So what we're doing is trying to revive this world. Yes. And yeah. we're doing it, I'm telling all of the owners, set up a small museum because they would like to find out the history of your building. Uh, that's true. More like the Regina building. Their father, their grandfather is very rich. He, oh, he was owner of Pasudeco, yung Pampanga Sugar. Pampangayin niyo sila eh. His father was murdered along with uh, General Olivas. And uh, I said, you should tell the story. And then yung maraming anak, I think there are nine children. So now it's the Apo. Open, for, open din po yung Regina. Unless you, you uh, know, my tour, then you can ah, join okay. the tour. But ano also, Calvo Building has a small museum also. Ayan Ay, naman, it's open. You can go. And ano, uh, very, ano rin, maganda yung things nila. Not okay. as neat, pero very old newspapers, mga 1930s. Ganun po kalay dito yun? Yung may Uno restaurant. Ah, dyan lang dyan po. Dyan lang po. Oh. Oh. Sino po owner nun? Ah, uh, the Tio Ticos. Ganda po ng story ng... Ah, oo. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I'm glad I saw you guys. <laughs> So, oh, okay lang po, okay lang yeah, po. Pupos, pupos po namin to sa YouTube. Yeah, okay yeah, lang yeah. po. Oh, oh, <laughs>